After Jimin left, the room felt silent. Jungkook's words of wanting to give Wagyan a big wedding were still lingering in her mind. She looked at the man she loved. He was looking so exhausted, so vulnerable. Jungkook, if there's one thing that could bring me peace, one wish I could want to be fulfilled. It would be to carry a part of you, to have our baby. Jungkook's reaction was immediate, his face contouring in a mix of anger and despair. Why and no? I can let you do that. I won't bend you to me when I am gone. But why? Her voice cracked, her heart on the brink of shattering. Why can't I have something to remember by you? Something more than just a memories. I pretended to cheat to fall out of love so you could move on after I am gone. So you wouldn't be stuck in the past, leaving for a memory. I was even opposing for this wedding, but you wanted this so bad that I have to give in. But I don't want to move on. I don't want a future without you in it. I know my love, but life goes on. You must go on with it. You are strong, Vayan. You can do this. Jungkook, please. Wayne's voice was a whisper, but it held the strength of her emotion. I know you are scared, but I want this. I want a part of you to stay with me. Wayne, I can't. I can't leave you with that burden. Our child, they would grow up without a father. I can't do this to them, to you. But they would grow up with a piece of you. They would know love, you love, through the stories I will tell them, through the life we have shared. It's not enough. A child needs a father, needs to feel that love firsthand. I wanted that more than anything, but not like this. I don't need the traditional family picture, Jungkook. I just need you in any way I can have you. Please don't deny me this last wish. Vagyan, you are asking for a miracle. I can't promise. I am not even sure I will make it to our wedding day. And if you do, if we have more time than we thought, wouldn't you want to leave behind a legacy of all love? If I don't survive, then my legacy would be a lifetime of your pain. Vayan, I can't be selfish. I love you too much for that. Then love me enough to give me this. Love me enough to trust that I can handle whatever comes our way. You were not thinking rationally, Vayan. You were too overwhelmed to think straight. This, this is the reason I never wanted you beside me during my these days. Let's not argue, please. 
if i survive i promise to have a family of our own but now not during this situation please my love go with my words but chanku Before Jungkook could finish his words she placed her left palm over his mouth and shook her head a lone tear left her eyes both of their eyes were looking deep into each other she then whispered don't complete your sentence please you you, you don't want me to carry your baby now it's okay it's not but please don't utter those words please Thank you for understanding my love. Two weeks later. The cool evening breeze carried a hint of jasmine as Vaikan and Jungkook sat together on the balcony. The city lights flickering like distant stars. Despite the pain that shadowed Jungkook's figures, Vaikan wore a playful smile, determined to leave the heaviness that hung between them. Tomorrow is the big day, Vaikan said, nudging Jungkook gently with her shoulder. Are you ready to make me the happiest woman in the world? I thought I already did that years ago when I proposed to you. He teased back the corners of his eyes clickering with mirth. Oh please that was just the beginning wait until you see me in my wedding dress you will be awestruck you will forget all your pain why i don't need to see you in wedding dress to be awestruck you do that to me every day i have been practicing my vows i am going to make you cry like a baby Is that a challenge because you know I am the tough one We will see about that but no matter what tomorrow will be perfect because it's the day I get to call you my husband Jungkook and Vaiyan sat on their bed after their light conversation at the balcony. Though Vaiyan was pretending all happy, she knew Jungkook didn't fail to notice her worries for his denourishing health. The bedroom was quiet, the only light coming from the soft glow of the bedside lamp. Vaiyan sat on the edge of the bed, her mind playing Dr. Lee's words about Jungkook's denourishing health. The Treatments continued but the hope they had once held was fading leaving a heavy silence in its wake Vaiyan I love you more than I have ever thought possible And I love you Jungkook with every piece of my being Vaiyan if if when i am gone i want you to find happiness again to marry to love don't you dare say that don't talk about when you are gone we are here now and that's all that matters But why can I have to be realistic? I can't stand the thought of you alone mourning for me for the rest of your life. Then don't think 
about it because it's not going to happen. I won't marry again. I can't even imagine it. You are my life, Jungkook. Silly women. Just sleep, Jungkook. We need to rest for tomorrow for our wedding day. As they lay there in the quiet of the night, their hearts beat in the union, a silent testament to a love that would endure beyond the confines of time and fate. Next day during wedding. The wedding venue was a vision of beauty draped in the soft glow of dew light. Guests filled the seats, their murmurs a gentle hum in the background as they waited for the ceremony to start. Vian entered a vision in white, her dress trailing behind her like a cloud. The sight of her brought a smile to Jungkook's face, a momentary reprieve from the pain that clung to his chest. We are gathered here to witness the union of Jungkook and Vaigan in holy matrimony. This is not just a formal exchange of vows but a heartfelt commitment of life and love. Mr. Jungkook, please recite your vows. Vaigan, from the moment I met you, my life has been brighter, my laughter louder and my heart fuller. I vow to cherish every mo memory we have made and every moment we will share, no matter how brief. I promise to be your rock, your solace and your greatest admirer. I may not have the gift of time, but I give you all that I am as long as I live. And now, Ms. Wagen, please share your vows. But before she could speak, a sudden pallor overtook Jungkook and he swayed on his feet. Jimin and Casey rushed to his side, their hands steady as they supported him. The guest rose in alarm, the murmur turning into a cacophony of concern. Jungkook. Concern was clearly visible on Jimin's face as he never thought Jungkook's health would become this bad so suddenly. He held Jungkook's arms tightly. Wine's voice a mere whisper. Jungkook. His eyes met hers, filled with love and apology. He couldn't voice. And then as the priest asked Wine for her vows, Jungkook's strength gave out. He collapsed into her arms, his breath shallow, his life slipping away like the final notes of their unfinished symphony. Someone freaking call the ambulance. The kids were a blur, their faces a mix of shock and sorrow. But Vain remained still, cradling Jungkook, her world reduced to the man she loved and the heartbeat that was fading fast. As Jungkook's breath grew fainter, Vain leaned close, her lips brushing his ear. I do. She whispered, her voice breaking. I do, now and forever. Tears blurred her vision, which she so badly tried not to shed. Sleep, my love, sleep. It must have been a very exhausting journey for you. Wait for me, okay? I will come when I will be permitted. And forgive me if I disturb you too much, my love. She looked up at the priest, her eyes a mirror of her shattered soul. She then said her voice barely audible. Please recite my vows. A soft gasp left the priest 
mouth upon hearing her words. Jimin, who was ready to take Jungkook in the ambulance, stood frozen. The guests too were shocked; they didn't know what to say anymore. The priest, his own eyes moist, recited the vows as wine had Jungkook her I do, a promise that transcended life and death, a vow that could bind her with him forever. More than five years later. The morning was gentle, a soft breeze playing with the leaves as Wayan worked hand in hand with her son Ji Hoon through the cemetery. As they approached Jungkook's grave, Wayan felt the familiar tug at her heart. A mixture of sorrow and love, she knelt down, Ji Hoon beside her, and traced the letters of Jungkook's name echoed in the stone. She remembered the way Jungkook used to say that she should move on after his demise, marry again, have a family. She remembered the way he used to call her silly when she refused to move on. Almighty had different plan for us, for me, Jungkook. Unless why would he give me our son Jehu, even after you strictly didn't want me to get pregnant? When I too never missed protection because I didn't want it to do something which you didn't want us to do. The hospital room is stark and sterile, a sharp contrast to the turmoil Wagen feels inside. Wagen, you were three months pregnant. In this state, you should focus on your health. Though I understand it's hard time for you. Your friend told me that recently you lost your husband. Wagen looked up, shocked, pregnant. Yeah, you have already completed your first trimester. Didn't you know? First trimester is supposed to be filled with nausea, morning sickness. And what about your menstruation? I, I didn't feel anything, doctor, and I have PCOS, so I didn't find it strange when I didn't got my periods all these months. Maybe you just got lucky with this pregnancy. Um, am I really pregnant? Because we always use protection. Sometimes protections are not 100% safe, Mrs. Jeon. You need to take care of yourself for your baby at least, Jimin said to her. Yes, and I know it's hard, but you are not alone. We are here for you. Wayne looks at Jimin, his words slowly sinking in. The shock gives way to a resolve to be strong for herself and for the new life growing inside her. Appa would have loved to see you today. Was Appa brave like me? He was brave, kind and he loved us very much, just like I see in you every day. Don't be sad. Mom, Appa is here, he said, placing his hand over her heart. They spent the morning there while telling stories of Jungkook, how he laughed, how he sang, how he loved. With each tale, Ji Hoon's eyes grew wider, a picture of his father forming in his young mind. As they prepared to leave, Ji Hoon placed a small toy card beside the headstone for Appa, so he's not bored. He would love that. Ji Hoon, thank you.